Hello and welcome again. Uh, in this video, we'll discuss another signature algorithm uh, that's called the DSA. Well, it's called like that is because digital signature algorithm. This is actually a standard that was adopted by the U.S. government uh, a while ago, and this is a very popular uh, algorithm to uh, sign uh, data or documents in that case. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at first the key generation for the digital signature algorithm. And remember these algorithms are all based on the asymmetric idea, which is you always have a public key and a private key. So the key generation that we're gonna look at this uh, this moment is for the 1024 bits, which can be done also for other, other sizes. Uh, so this is the recommended size, the 1024, uh, just for security reasons. And these algorithms, the security of them is also uh, based on the fact of the logarithm problem, which is if you have a, a efficient algorithm to do these computations for logs, then all of this will not work. So let's look at, at the, the key generation for the DSA. So the key generation for the DSA, um, the person or the entity that's going to do the key generation is the person who is interested in signing the messages, which in this case, so we're talking about Bob will be the one in this case that you generate the public key and the private keys. Now remember the public key is used to check that the signature is valid and the private key is the one that Bob keeps secret. So he is the only one who can sign messages on his behalf. So I'm gonna go right into the algorithm and see how this is. So the algorithm is gonna start like this. So we're gonna first, step one, we're gonna select a prime number Q. And that prime number Q is gonna be between two to the 159 and two to the 160. Now that assures that this number Q here, it has a, a bit length of 160. So that's why we put this restrictions here. We want other way to say it, just say Q has a bit length of 160. That's equivalent to saying this inequality here. So we're gonna select that prime. We're gonna select another prime number, which is gonna be of actually length 1024. So we select the prime number P with the following properties. There are two things that have to happen here. So the prime P, as I mentioned, has to be of length 1024. That's why we have these inequalities over here, P bigger than two to the 1023 and less than two to the 1024. And also another important property is that the prime number that you previously chose, which is this Q that is 160 bit length, needs to divide the P minus one. So whatever P here that you choose, it also has this restriction that Q has to go exactly into P minus one. Now, this is uh, usually the most uh, important part of the key generation, steps one and two are usually the ones that take the most time or the most challenging in that case. And what I just wrote down here, there are efficient algorithms for this. For this, I mean generating Q and MP. So with those properties that we just mentioned there. So this is the, the hardest part of the key generation. Uh, the third step is you're gonna select a number alpha, which is a, a generator of the unique cyclic group of order Q and CP. Now that is a lot of uh, words there. Some of them, some of them you might have seen before with cyclic group and unique, all of that. What that basically means is this. I'm gonna select a number alpha and CP star. So uh, any number from uh, one to P minus one. And the property of this alpha has to be that alpha to the Q needs to be one and no power less than that is one. So alpha to the Q is the first time you get one. All the other powers, alpha to the first, alpha to the second, all the way down, they don't give you one. And this is all, of course, all modulo, modulo P. So that's basically what all, all those words mean here. And the way we're gonna select that number is like this. Uh, first, we're gonna split this up, step number three, into two steps, three, one, and three, two. Step three, one is I'm gonna select a number at random in CP star, so from one to P minus one, and I'm gonna compute uh, this expression here, this modular exponentiation, which is that number that I selected to the P minus one divided by Q. Now this P minus one over Q is a whole number because remember Q divides P minus one. 
So I do this modular exponentiation that is here, I get as a number alpha, whatever that number is. Now, if alpha is equal to one, then we go back to step 3.1. So I, I gather another uh, number g in here. Now, I stop whenever alpha is not equal to one. So when, I, when alpha is not equal to one, that's it. That's the alpha that you need. Now, because there's a lot of choices here, usually what you do is you choose first g equals to two because that usually works. Not, not all the time, but usually g is the one that you wanna choose there and this is usually gonna work. If it doesn't work g, then you choose another value in cp star. Okay, that's the step three. If you see here, step three is not difficult. It's just if you want to implement this, you can implement this with a while loop in Java, for example. And after that, and so the steps are actually very simple. Steps one and two are the ones that require a little bit more work. So the, the fourth step, once we selected the alpha, we just have to select a random integer between one and Q minus one. And that is actually very easy to do, just a random number there. And the last step, step five, will be to compute alpha, which is computed in a step three, to the D, which was computed in a step four, and then modulo P. That's gonna give me some number that I'm gonna call B. Those five steps will give me the private key and the public key. So the public key will be uh, four numbers, P and Q, that were generated in steps one and two. Alpha, that's a step three, and um, B, that's a step uh, five. Now, the private key is that number, the random number that you chose between one and Q minus one. So that's the, the private key. And that's the key generation for, for the digital signature algorithm. So we have a public key, which is this one, and a private key. So what we have here, if we look at this picture, that we, the one we have seen several times is uh, we have Bob here. Bob is going to publish this public key, P, Q, Alpha, and B, and it's going to keep secret, uh, of course, the private key because that way he will be the only one who can sign uh, messages on his behalf. So that's the key generation for, for the digital signature algorithm. Uh, as I mentioned before in the video, finding the primes P and Q is usually the most challenging step. So that's the steps one and two the ones that are there. The other steps are actually rather simple. Um, so before uh, we actually get into the uh, a real example with this, which is, of course, it's gonna be very low, long numbers because the prime P has to be 1024 bits, so it's gonna be a large number, and all the other numbers are gonna be also large. Uh, before we actually do that, let me give you an example with small numbers. So um, this example is uh, the DSA, the Digital Signature Algorithm, uh, generation with artificially small numbers. Artificially is because you wouldn't do this in real life. You, you, you wouldn't uh, uh, select these small numbers for your uh, digital signature algorithm. So so let's go into the example. So let's say that Bob, which is the person who's gonna assign the messages, selects two prime numbers, P and Q, that such a way that Q divides P minus one. So basically what I'm saying here is I'm just uh, doing the steps one and two at the same time. So you have to select two prime numbers. Let's say, for example, in this case, that P is this uh, number here, which is not, of course, 1024 bits. This is a lot smaller, but that's why I'm calling this artificial uh, example. But just for the sake of being simple, let's just say that I choose this P, and this is my number Q, which is also a prime number. Now, you can double check that, uh, the, uh, that P and Q are actually prime numbers, and that a Q actually divides P minus one. That's not difficult to do. Uh, actually, I think your calculator might actually be to be able to do something like this. And so that's it, that's steps one and two right here. Now we go to step three, which is we're gonna uh, select the number alpha that we mentioned, and that is step three. So we select a random element in here and CP star, which is C star of this prime number, which is the one that is right here, this is the number P. Now, uh, so try G equals two because that usually works. So let's see if G equals two works. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So alpha will be G to the P minus one over Q modulo P. That's how we're gonna try alpha. So in this case, G is two, uh, P minus one is this number here. So if you see, this is the prime number minus one divided by 5209, uh, which is the prime Q. Now, this is gonna be a whole number because remember, Q divides P minus one. 
and I do this modulo the prime number which is this one. When you compute that this is just a simple modular exponentiation you get this number here. Of course this number is not equal to 1 that means it worked. Now if I got 1 here for some reason then that means I have to choose another number in this group but I didn't get 1 so I'm gonna stay with this one so since uh, the alpha here is not 1 alpha is the generator of the group of order Q and CP star. Uh, let me give you a little bit more detail what I mean by that. So what I mean by that is all these elements that are here, all these uh, uh, numbers are all in here, of course, in CP star. And you have Q elements. Alpha to the Q will be 1, so you will get back to this one. So all of these numbers are all different. That's what I mean by a group of order Q in, in this uh, group here. All right, so, so alpha is this one, so I chose that as my alpha. And step number four is... Uh, selecting a random number between 1 and Q minus 1. Remember, this is part of the uh, key generation. Now, Q is uh, 5209, so that's why I have to select it between 1 and 5208. And any random number there will do. So let's say, for example, that D is 2626. Just any select a random number here for D. So as you can see, that step is not difficult. And the last step will be getting the number B, which is just alpha to the d, whatever the number I selected here and the previous step modulo the prime number. So in this case, b will be alpha. You remember this is the value of alpha to the d, which is this number right here, and modulo p. Uh, you do this modulo exponentiation, uh, doing whatever algorithm uh, fits there, and then you get this number 864711, so that's my number b. So we are pretty much done actually, because then my public key will be P, Q, alpha, and B. So those four numbers for the digital signature algorithm. So in this particular case, uh, we have that this is the prime P, that's the prime Q we selected, that was the number alpha, that was the generator of that group, and this is my uh, alpha to the D modulo P, which is uh, this number here that we just computed over there. And the private key is just 2626. 26. So that's basically the key generation. Now, the reason I'm spending a little bit of time on this is because this key generation is a little bit more involving than the other ones, the other detailed signature uh, schemes. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a realistic example of uh, how to generate uh, an actual um, a public key and private key that meet the specification so in the sense that the prime P will actually be 1024 bit and this prime Q will be actually 160 uh, bits. So I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.